my name is Caitlin Davis and I work at Sergeant Alvin Sea York State Park. And my name is Monique Johnson. I work at Cordell Hall Bird Place State Park. Today what we're going to talk to you a little bit about is both the suffrage and the anti-suffrage movement. We are going to specifically talk about a particular suffragist and a particular anti-suffragist. We chose these two individuals because if you looked at them on paper, it looked like they should have ended up on opposite sides from the cause they ended up supporting. I want to talk to you today about an important woman in the women's suffrage movement. She was considered the intellectual and the organizer here in Tennessee. Catherine Kenney was born in 1874 to a poor Irish Catholic family in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Her father would pass away when she was only four years old, and her mother would have to support all six children. Catherine would eventually have to drop out of school to help support her family. She would become a clerk, a stenographer, and a cashier until she married John Kenney. And her and John would move to Nashville, Tennessee when he got a job as a salesman for a local coffee company. And they would quickly move up through the ranks as John became the president of the Coca-Cola Bottling Company in Nashville. And they would have four children. Now Catherine said her children were the reason why she supported the women's suffrage movement. That she felt that women can make a difference in politics and she wanted to have the right to vote to make the world better for her children. Now, Catherine was kind of unusual in the women's suffrage movement here in Tennessee. As a leader of the women's suffrage movement, she was the only Catholic. All the other uh, leaders in the Tennessee women's suffrage movement were white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. But Catherine would learn a lot through her time with the women's suffrage movement. She would learn how to organize and she would learn how to be a leader which she would use throughout her life. Now Catherine was the co-chair of the Tennessee Equal Suffers Association in 1915 and she would go on to organize the first parade for the women's suffrage movement in the south and the parade ran from the Centennial Park to the Capitol building in Nashville, Tennessee. She would also go on to um, be the vice president and have many other roles in the women's suffrage movement in Tennessee. Now, in the summer of 1920, she was tasked to persuade a. A. Governor A.H. Roberts to call a special session. Tennessee was one of the last few states that had not voted on the 19th Amendment to ratify it. And so, um, Catherine sat down with Roberts and was able to persuade him to call a special session on the second week of August. Once the special session was called, the women suffered the League of Women Sup League of Women Voters um, headquartered themselves in the Hermitage Hotel and staged many of their events and their plans out of the Hermitage, including lobbying um, legislature legislators to vote yes for the 19th Amendment. Now this was an arduous task, but the women were set and ready to go. And they were quite successful because on August 24th, 1920, Robert signed the resolution to ratify the 19th Amendment. The anti-suffragist I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today is a lady by the name of Charlotte Rowe. She would rise to prominence in the anti-suffrage movement as the years went on. She was a single, unmarried woman who supported herself through various means, but she first got involved in the anti-suffrage movement in her home state of New York. She then traveled to Washington, D.C. to serve as field secretary for the National Association Opposed to Women's Suffrage. Her job at the headquarters had her preparing their uh, correspondence and their circulars that they distributed and copies of their publication, The Woman's Patriot. She lived above the facility and she would travel out at night and listen to suffrage lectures in the area so she knew what the opposition was saying. And also in her role as field secretary, she traveled across the United States to further the cause of anti-suffrage. So when the issue was being brought forth uh, about ratification in various states, be that California, Kansas, Louisiana, or Alabama, Charlotte Rowe was often there at the forefront to speak out about why you should not do that. One of her main arguments was that in areas where she had been, where she had seen women be granted even limited voting rights, 
whether that was voting in local elections or, or state elections, she saw women descend to the political level of men. So she did not think that you should support the suffrage movement on those grounds. She was not afraid to change up her argument though, uh, depending on where she was. So in the South, one of the particular arguments that she chose to use was that you did not need a federal amendment to grant women with the right to vote. It was a decision that could be made particularly at the state level. This was an argument that she used a lot whenever she arrived here in Tennessee. As we approach August, the women's suffrage movement is getting some steam going for the 19th Amendment here in Nashville. And so many of the stuff takes place at the Hermitage Hotel in Nashville, downtown Nashville. And so the Hermitage is a hotbed for both anti and suffrage movement. Um, there are rumors that the anti-suffrage are listening in the air vents to the suffrages conversations in the room. There's a lot of spying go going on. And there's also incidents that take place in the lobby of the Hermitage Hotel. One such incident involves the two women that we have been discussing with you today. So the anti-suffragist Charlotte Rowe that I discussed and then Catherine Kenny, the suffragist that Monique discussed. On one evening, they were both in the lobby at the Hermitage Hotel and Charlotte Rowe was making her way across the lobby while Catherine Kenny was uh, just, just having a conversation with a group of her fellow suffragists. And as she saw Charlotte Rowe coming towards them, she made the comment to her fellow suffragists, let us move away from that notorious woman. Charlotte Rowe, of course, would have been someone that her public persona was very important to her as a, as a public speaker. So she actually threatened legal action against Catherine Kenny following this altercation. So to learn more, we ask you to reach out and go to the Tennessee Archives. They have a wonderful website on the women's suffrage movement. So please do more research um, to learn more about these two women that would be pivotal in the suffrage, in the anti-suffrage movement.